Hey guys, welcome to the Rusty Beauty's Garage again. It's been a while, right? Because I was on vacation. I took some time off, I think I deserved it. <laughs> and uh, I wasn't able to work a lot before the vacation, two, three days before that, because I had to organize stuff. Anyways, we are back now and it is kind of overloaded here with work. Um, there's not much inside the garage, but I have a car inside, a trailer outside waiting and I have cars coming again to do some work on them. Anyways, before, before my vacation, I tried to complete all the small projects that I had. Small, I mean a day or two or three day repairs for people that have been patiently waiting for me to do the work on their cars. And we pushed all these projects through and now I'm left with two kind of three bigger projects. So one of them is this frame which came out of 1972 TR6. And uh, I showed you a video the other day about a TR6, a 1970 TR6 that has a lot of history with me and uh, it's back to me to be finished. So that's waiting outside in the trailer. It needs to be brought in. I just need to get rid of my own car from here. I'm gonna put it in storage somewhere and then we're gonna bring that TR6. And in the meantime, I'm rebuilding an engine for a TR6 that is also in storage right now, but the engine is out and all the parts are here in this bin. We ordered the new parts. The block and the crankshaft are in the machine shop right now. So that's on hold for a while until we get the parts and the block back. I'm not filming this because we've done many TR6 engine rebuilds here, including this one. This is the one that I showed you, the tearing apart. That's the burnt one. So that's the only video about this one. I didn't film the rest of it, but now it is complete, um, including the transmission with overdrive in the back. They're just waiting here to be picked up. And eventually a TR3 is going to come later in November, maybe, or We'll see exactly when it is gonna come, but it's gonna be for a complete body restoration. Well, it needs floors and seals and those major components. That's why I'm saying ma uh, major, but anyway. So this is gonna be the subject of today's video though, this frame. So let's get crack -a on it. Okay, so let's have a quick overview of what needs to happen here on this frame. Uh, it came from the States. Two of my viewers actually brought it to me, drove all the way from Michigan, I believe, and brought it here for me to repair it. And as you can see here, it has the regular well-known rust spots here. And you know, when this starts showing up on the outside, this means that inside the trailing arm supports are really bad, but we have a solution to that, you know. Also, the diff mount has been ripped from here, the front right one. As usual, this is the weak spot. It has something to do with the torque, how the drive shaft turns this way and it pushes the diff in certain directions. So more often they're not, than not, this is the first one to fail but we have a repair kit we're gonna install new studs here and we're gonna weld them and box them as we're supposed to uh, of course we're gonna inspect everything else because sometimes this is also a weak spot here so many times they rust here as well but this one looks like it's good this trailing arm is the same of course it's not gone way too far because I've seen some that are so rusted that the car sucks and everything. This car, I guess, didn't suck that much. I don't know, maybe it did. But uh, yeah, the shirts, I don't know the bottom shirt, but this one looks solid to me, but we bought new one. So we're gonna change that one as well. Here, it is uh, <laughs> self-protected by oil from the transmission, so I'm sure there's nothing problematic here. And the front end as well. I think it is all good here. One of the guys showed me here something that he noticed. He says that there was a crack here. Yeah, actually, this is cracked. 
So we're gonna reinforce that. Anyway, what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take my needle scaler and I'm gonna start cleaning it up as much as possible so I can see what is wrong. Okay, so this side is done. I mean, like we're not doing a perfect cleaning up, getting it ready for paint or anything. We're just cleaning the flaky rust so we can inspect it for more cracks or damaged areas like here, for example. Like we were gonna change this t-shirt anyways, but it shows you how there's something that in some areas you don't see it until you go and actually either sandblast it or needle scale it or here I discovered something else. You can see even here on the outside it is cracked. Here a complete piece is missing. Um, but other than that I didn't find much issues. So we have the two trailing arms, the two t-shirts top and bottom and this area here. We also have to replace this stud unfortunately even though it's solid but obviously the nut rusted and uh, they snapped the nut so now we have to replace the whole stud so we're gonna see how we're gonna do that here in the center i haven't done much because obviously you see there's even paint under the oil same thing here in the front i've done on the outside everything i cleaned up to make sure that there's no other rust these are prone to rust very often but i checked them underneath as well they are solid both sides i've seen one of these crack big time so this i'm gonna inspect a little bit further i'm gonna clean them up the thing is though most of the time the problems are underneath because that's where the water collects right and it sits for a long time so that's why we're gonna have to flip it and do the same thing underneath david is coming as known as chef tash He's coming for a visit. He hasn't been here in weeks because he was busy away on a business trip. I was on vacation, so he's coming today for a visit with a Diet Coke. So I'm gonna wait for him to help me to flip it upside down. And in the meantime, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit more. I don't know how I missed it. I cleaned the other side, but here I missed it somehow. So even though it is oily, and greasy here and I don't expect anything to be rusted there's sometimes there's stress cracks here because this is where the A arms are held and there's a lot of stress from the suspension right so let me clean this and we're gonna talk again okay so these are cleaned up and they look in a pretty good shape I might re-weld them just to reinforce them a little bit but uh, the welds are good the other side as well and they look good so mr chef tash is here and he's gonna help me now to flip it to the other side okay so this is the bottom and like i said here you see already there is some areas that are rusted i think there's a there's support inside that prevents it from crashing when you tighten this bolt and that's what rusted there but other than that i don't see much trouble of course the trailing arm <laughs> yeah here too this is part of the frame this is the support that we're going to replace so now we're going to have to repair this part of the frame as well but the center is good and here we're gonna hit it a little bit with the needle scaler but it looks pretty good so, so that's what we're gonna focus on trailing arms once we clean the bottom as well
All right, so <laughs> I've done half of it. I've done this half only and went around and I've done there, but that was like really quickly. And here too, I'm just going with the needle scaler and checking whether it sounds good because even the sound of the needle scaler, the way it hits, it can tell you whether it is solid or not. I don't know if you're gonna catch it on camera, but I'm gonna do that part over there live because I just want you to see how easy the needle scaler shows you the problems. Because here, this looked just like here. I was even thinking, well, we have to change this t-shirt anyways because we have to remove it in order to replace this. But I was thinking, wow, well, it's actually solid. Well, it turns out it isn't. And I'm pretty sure this side is gonna be the same. So I'm gonna show you now live how this works here too, you see? It looked just like this. You could barely see anything, but the needle scaler went through right away. Well, it turns out that this side is actually better. There's no such a big hole like here, even though inside might there might be, but we don't know. And here there's no hole, there's no a true hole, but we will see when we start cutting. Anyways, you saw how with the needle scaler, I can tell whether it's solid or not. I don't know if, if you heard the difference, how it sounds where it's solid and how it sounds like here, for example, when this went through and here, of course. So I'm not gonna go further than that. Like I said, the goal here is not to clean up the frame perfectly. The goal is to inspect it and make sure that we know of all the areas that need attention. And the owner said that he's gonna take care of the rest. They're gonna clean it. They're gonna send it uh, somewhere for paint and uh, they're gonna take care of that. Of course, when we're replacing this, we're gonna paint them inside before we put it on. So I'm gonna spend just a little bit more time cleaning the oil here because I don't want it to start burning on me and all that. Again, not very thoroughly because I don't wanna go to the sky with the bill for just cleaning the frame, something that the owner is gonna do himself. So anyways, I'm gonna do that on my own and then we'll see, I guess we're gonna start cutting it. Okay, so before we start cutting anything, we have to make sure that we have the right parts and also that my jig is gonna work here because I used it on multiple frames already and I know that it fits but we want to make sure that it fits on this particular frame as well and for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about this is my jig I made this years ago it was just a one-time thing and then it turned out to be a permanent <laughs> repair jig for frames and this goes with it as well and uh, there's a video and i'm gonna give you a link to that video because you're gonna see me using it here if you want to know how i made it then you should go and watch my first video it's actually on the 70 tr6 that i told you about earlier anyway so this is my jig and these are the repair sections that i bought from most motors part number 85390 and it should be two parts so they are painted already, which is good. And this is the internal structure that I'm talking about. So this goes um, like that, I guess. And 
the, the internal structure obviously is there to prevent you from crushing the frame when you're tightening the trailing arm bolts. They're not handed, you can just flip it around. And we have what we call the t-shirts, for obvious reasons. <laughs> this is the one for the top, so when you surface rust it, anyway, uh, it has this channel for the drive shaft, but it doesn't have this end here, so we're gonna have to keep this end, which is in a good shape anyways. So you see this end is one piece with this, but they don't make it this way anymore. So we're gonna have to cut it here and weld it. So that's fine. And we also have the differential mount reinforcement kit. This came from British Parts Northwest actually, but I believe you can buy it from different places. It's a very simple kit. You can make it if you want, it, but it's not worth for me the time. I think it's cheaper to buy it. It comes with the two studs. Usually these don't fit perfectly. Oh yeah, actually they will. The stud goes through and then you box it on the outside like that and you make it much more sturdy than what it is on the frame. Let me show you. For those of you who are not familiar, this is how it used to be. Just a plate that is welded here and here and the stud but obviously you see that's the that's what happens but with this you box it on the outside as well and it becomes more solid so that's it now that we know that we have all the parts i'm gonna flip the frame and i'm gonna test fit my jig to and i want to do that because each and every frame is different that's why you know here on the trailing arm supports you have shims because they adjust the imperfections from production because the frames were never perfect. That's why sometimes you have two shims, sometimes you have four shims, you have four and two or two and four or one and three or whatever. So I wanna put my jig and see how accurate to the jig the frame is. I'm not saying that my jig is accurate. I made it based on the 1970 frame but I don't know if that frame was perfect. So that's why I want to put it on and see how this corresponds to my jig. And then we're going to put the other support the same way as this one. We're going to try to put it as close as possible to this one. Because little changes here affect your toe. You know, toe is when your tires are like this, that's toe in. When your tires are like that, that's toe out. So depending on how the brackets are mounted here, that of course affects your toe in and out. About the camber, the actual brackets are adjustable. I have one that is cracked here. This one is a leftover from a project that I changed it on because you see how it, it is cracked. But anyways, these mounting brackets are different with three notches, with two notches or and with one notch. And the difference is the relevance between these two mounting holes and this pivoting hole here. On uh, some of them, the pivoting hole is higher, on some is lower. So I don't remember by heart, but for different years of trials, they made different brackets. So for the height, we're gonna try also to keep that in the same height, I'm gonna show you later, but I'm gonna recommend to the owner to buy the adjustable height brackets from good parts, because they are beautiful. You can adjust the trailing arms on the spot without changing the whole entire bracket. So for now, we're just gonna worry about the toe. Later, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna worry about the camber because we want to put it as close as possible to where this is. So this is how my jig works. This needs to match this hole and this needs to match this hole when we put it on. And of course the holes, wow. <laughs> This is gonna be in my way now. Tan, tan, tan. Anyways, these bolts go into the holes here for the trailing arm brackets. And then this nut falls right on top of this nut and we can run a bolt through it. And this nut falls right on top of one of these. I think this one, 
and then we bolt it here and that gives us the correct position of the trailing arm. In the meantime, because when we cut this, this whole arm might move. It's solid, but still, I want to put this here, which picks up this hole and one of these, like that, and just makes sure that this doesn't move in this direction. But it looks like we have to get rid of this first, so I guess we should start cutting. So for now, I'm not gonna get rid of the whole t-shirt here. I'm just gonna get rid of this sleeve of the t-shirt and uh, here we'll see after if we need to do something. But I don't wanna remove the whole t-shirt because that's gonna keep the structure. We're gonna replace this member first and the other one as well. And then we're gonna remove the t-shirts one by one again. And we're gonna replace them one by one. So I'm just gonna cut it here. Okay, so this is one of the reasons why I refuse to do this repair on the car. Because there are spots like here, like here, and on the other side especially, we have a hole here. That how do you repair that when the body is on the car? Yeah, even if you have a lift and you can go, you can go underneath, but how do you weld all that? And you see also the trailing arm overlaps the frame, and that's actually the structural point. That's what you rely on. Here on the side you weld it, and here as well, but in my opinion, that's not enough. You need to weld it on top too, and not just butt weld it, you need to overlap it and weld it. Just my opinion. That's why when people ask me, can I do that for them on the car, I say no, I need to remove the body, and it becomes a big job. Anyways, I don't think this is gonna fit, because we have to do the same at the bottom, I believe, but let's try. We have to grind more here. Okay, we have a small problem on this side. Turns out that this frame is different as expected than the one that I made the jig on. So what happens is my bolt cross threads. It goes a little bit diagonally and I don't want to force it because I don't want to ruin the threads. There goes my heater. Okay, okay, sorry, I'm gonna have to yell. But here I'm already maxed out. This means that if I cut this trailing arm off and mount the new one with the bolt bolted there, it's gonna move it just a smidge in that direction, maybe an eighth of an inch. Which is still okay because you can add one more shim on this side and the trailing arm is gonna be in the same position. But we don't wanna do that. I just wanna put it the same way as it is right now. So that's how it works. When I put this screwdriver there, and it is vertical, that's perfect. This bolt mounted properly, no problem. And this bottomed out here, so this side is perfect. This side, if we want to make it the same as now, we're gonna have to do it this way. Okay, so that gives us a reference for our toe, but now let's take a reference for our camber. So this frame is pretty solid in these areas. I'm pretty sure that these two arms are not gonna move relative to each other, but I still want to make sure. So we're going to take a straight edge and we're going to run it from one end to the other. And as you can see here, we have an eight or so in the center. This means these are higher. I don't think that they sagged. Eh, is it possible that this sagged? But it is the same on both sides. I mean, here and here, it's the same distance. Let's measure it. So if I do that here, 
and zero my caliper, now this is gonna give me the difference here. Come on. So that's 95, not even an eighth of an inch. Eighth of an inch is 120 tau, 125. This is 95 tau. So that's what we're gonna aim for. So, okay, we're gonna remove this and time to start crack locking with the sozo. holes were hidden. So for those of you who tell me, well, I just have a small hole on my training arm that needs to repair. Like I said before, the small hole is only the tip of the iceberg. That's what's inside. Okay, so now this is the hardest part to get rid of these ends. Actually, this one is relatively easy. Usually there's a hole inside here too. We're gonna make sure that we inspect that. But this one is relatively easy because the cut, the welds are here and on top and underneath, and this comes off. We can just grind it off. This one is the harder one because here, this is the frame actually, and our training arm fits inside. So these are the welds here, here, and here. And I believe there's some here and so we have to get rid of this part here and this part here but keep the rest the bottom has a hole oh where's my finger i can't see it but <laughs> my finger goes in <laughs> so we have to repair that as well when we flip it so yeah i'm gonna take my time now here with the angle grinder i'm not gonna hold you here and we're gonna start cleaning this up Okay, so what I did was I cut right through the welds and this now comes off. <laughs> There's still more parts inside because like I said, our trailing arm went inside before. So there's still more that we need to get rid of. Otherwise our new one is not gonna fit. I keep calling it trailing arm. It's a trailing arm support, but you know what I mean trailing arm is the actual trailing arm <laughs> so anyway I'm gonna continue here now that's how it goes this is where my finger went <laughs> okay so the easy part was to remove what we just removed now we have to cut this weld somehow and get rid of it because this wall is going all the way in and that's also part of our trailing arm support. So how do we cut this weld? <laughs> Hard. rid of that part partially but there's still more inside you see this lip this is still part of this cross member because there must be a notch here on this piece there must be a notch here and here and the new one fits into these notches the flanges like these flanges on the new piece fit under here and there's still whole entire layer here 
a whole entire layer on top. You can see where they split. So we still have to get rid of those. So I'm not gonna hold you here for all that because it's annoying, but I guess I'm gonna show you the final result. Okay, so everything from inside is removed. I just decided to make a cut here and with the angle grinder, this one, I made a cut like this and I was able to remove the thing from here. This cut I'm gonna have to make anyways, just like here, because this piece needs to be replaced and this piece as well. You see this one? You see? So we're gonna have to cut this out and this out and replace them. So maybe on the other side, it's gonna be easier if we just cut them like this from the very beginning so we don't need to bother a lot with the structure we'll see anyways uh, that's where i'm gonna leave it for now this i'm not gonna clean because it needs to be replaced and i'm gonna get rid of this this should be much easier cleaned up as well and as you can see we have problem here as expected that's normal so we're gonna have to cut this out and replace it but the bigger problem is underneath and we have a small hole here and it turned out into a big hole and it obviously continues that way too that's under the shirt but like we said we don't want to remove it yet we want to remove it after we replace the arm so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut out a piece maybe uh yeah maybe two separate pieces one for here and one for here and we're gonna weld them in the corner because of this curve it needs to be two pieces anyways even if it is one piece with an angle and just half inch here so i can use the shrinker stretcher to make this curve or i can make one piece for here one piece for here and weld them in the corner and there's another reason why i want to do it in two pieces which is basically i don't want to uh, compromise the structure because if i cut both sides at the same time now this whole piece here at the back might sag and i don't want to risk it i know that most of it is solid and it is hard, but I don't want to risk it. So I'm going to cut this one first. I'm going to repair that. And then I'm going to cut the bottom and I'm going to repair that. Uh, I'm going to just replace it up to here where it's exposed now. So we can weld our member here to it. And then the rest we're going to repair when we remove the shirt to replace it. Okay, I made a repair part for here and I'm going to cut it out now. I'm using, uh, I believe this is 16 gauge sheet metal from this uh, leftover that's from my son's Miata. This is the rocker the, or the seal that we didn't use the whole piece, we cut it here. We used the bottom and this is leftover and it's pretty solid metal. It's galvanized so I had to grind the coating away, but it is uh, pretty solid metal. That's why I kept it for frame repairs. The fenders are like really thin for the Miata, but the rockers are solid. So I'm going to cut this and repair it. I don't need to keep it here for that. Okay, so the side is repaired and I cut out the bottom from here. And I made this patch that I'm going to weld here now, like that. And the rest we're going to take care of later okay done i made sure to turn my heat on the welder high here for this weld because i want it to be strong 
I'm gonna grind it just a little bit now. I'm gonna leave as much metal as possible there because it's welded only on the outside and we don't wanna grind the weld away, right? So just here maybe, so the cross member can come and overlap it. All right, uh, now that we've finished with this side, let's focus on this one. So turns out that we also have a little hole here on the side. I just hit it with the needle scaler again. So we have to replace this whole square at the bottom. We have to replace the one on top. Here on the side, only the bottom is in a bad shape. So yeah, I can cut this out, this out and this square here out and start by building this one first, then the one on the bottom, then the one on the top. Okay, it's all repaired, welded inside and outside, and I hope that our thing, like our cross member, is gonna fit inside still because of the wheels here, but I'm sure it's gonna fit because it needs to reach all the way till the end. So now I'm gonna try to blow through that hole maybe, get rid of all the rust inside, and I'm gonna spray as much as I can some paint inside it's a shame to assemble it like that right and we're gonna paint this as well because this is gonna be hidden and uh, we're gonna go from there all right so it's painted inside and it's time to install our failing arm support here so as you can see on the outside there's four holes and on the inside there's two holes I have no idea why that is because we only use two holes for the bracket but there's something that I don't know so anyways um, they used to make these a little bit too long and you had to shorten them which was making it tricky because when the thing is on the jig it was hard to adjust it but looks like they made it to length now so you see this side has these two lips these are the ones that overlap on top and bottom there and this part needs to go inside. Now mine doesn't fit because it looks like this needs to be open. Okay, it looks like it's gonna fit, so I'm gonna take it out because we need to put this inside as well. But this is still a little bit too long, so we're gonna have to shorten this one. Because when you line up the holes like that, you see this is sticking out here, and that's a little bit too long. Yeah, you see where it stops. So we have to trim this a little bit. We're gonna make it as long as this. So we're gonna trim uh, one eight, and then we're gonna have to figure out how we're gonna weld it here. I think I'm gonna drill holes and I'm gonna plug weld it because it's gonna be more solid. I have spot welder that I can use, but I don't like spot welds. I mean, for sheet metal it's fine, but for structural like this, if we, it's better if we plug weld it. Okay, so I'm gonna trim that, I'm gonna drill the holes and I'm gonna bring you back. Okay. So this is trimmed. I tested them both separately and they fit. Question is whether they're gonna fit together. <laughs> so the holes are drilled. I didn't drill all the way because here it goes in. And let's put them on the jig and try to fit them at the same time. Again, the four holes are on the outside. Wow, well, look at that. It actually matches, eh? <laughs> okay. They're all all the way in. Time to test fit it. Well, actually, if it fits, <laughs> it's just gonna stay. You know what, I'm gonna open these a little bit. I'm gonna bend them and then we're gonna bend them back down to make it easy. I'm just gonna use a 
just like that. Let's see how gently it's gonna go in. Okay, here we are almost there. We said we were gonna use this screwdriver, right? So that's where it was. We can put a bolt there, remember? But we can put one here. Wow, except we are too far. It needs to come this way. Huh, it needs to come this way like half an inch. And we don't have room here. So we need to shorten the whole thing by half an inch, but then there it's gonna be like, wow. That doesn't work well. Not happy with that. Just gonna, just gonna compare this distance from center. Yep, definitely we need to move that way. Well, it is what it is. That's gonna open a gap here and it's barely gonna overlap. Well, that's not great, but you see, even this is now forced to be there. Ah! Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna take it out and I'm gonna cut, I guess, half an inch. Maybe only from the top and the bottom. This side, I don't know if you see it, but this side, the outside, can be longer and then we're gonna bend it around this one and we're gonna weld it there. That, that's not a problem. Okay, so this is how I trimmed it. Let's see if this time it is gonna work. Yeah, there's a gap here, which I don't like, but it is what it is. Can actually test it with the bolt, even though it wasn't threading properly. It was threading on an angle, right? Yep, that's exactly how it was going. It was cross-threading like this. So that's the perfect spot. This one is, let me tighten it. Perfect, so that's our position. I know we have now gaps here and there, but I'm just gonna tuck it in multiple places. But of course, we're gonna check before that also the height of this arm. And then we're gonna tuck it in multiple places, as many places as we can, just so we can make it as sturdy as possible. And then uh, we're gonna remove the jig and I'm gonna show you here what we're gonna do. Yeah, it is exactly the same. I don't even need to measure it. It was 95 tau difference, right? Mm, where's my caliper? Here. How did we do it? We zeroed it here. 83. 116. <laughs> of course, in the different location, it's gonna be different, but it is very close. So, ready to tuck it. If we haven't tested the jig before we installed it, I was gonna doubt myself. I was gonna be like, is my jig wrong? Is it whatever? But the thing is, we tested it and we know that this was the exact position. And even though we have a gap here now, we know that this is the exact position of the hole because that's the most important, where the holes, where the brackets are, right? Anyway. Hey, so you see how big 
this gap is now and the overlap is barely overlapping but it is fine because also the shirt goes on top right so it comes this way so there's gonna be another piece that's holding it on top so i'm not worried about the overlap but here we're gonna have to insert a piece now and maybe even an angle piece so we can weld it around here and maybe somewhere here we just have to be careful because here is where the bracket goes and yeah we don't want to come too far this way anyways and the same on the inside and the inside is going to be even worse because we don't have much access there but yeah we're going to insert a piece and we're going to weld it here we're going to shorten or bend this a little bit and we're gonna fill it and then we're gonna fill this little hole here and we're done you know what i'm curious now i want to see the distance from the holes to the frame and compare it to the other side i'm 100 percent sure we are correct but you know one-handed so we're gonna do it this way okay like this the center of the hole oh you have a better view than mine i'm gonna use your screen that's pretty much the center of the hole right and that's one nine four three almost two inches let's see the other side to the weld exactly and we're still at one nine four zero <laughs> even though i was sure i wanted to double check you know what i mean okay so this is what i made and it fits nicely here like this so i'm gonna weld it like this and then we're gonna do the same on the inside and we're golden okay this is welded and for inside, look what I found. I found this on the floor. So this is the piece that I cut from this side, from here. So they are off by quarter inch. Anyway, I'm gonna weld this there and we're almost done. Okay. Still where we left it. So that's it. Let me give you a closer view. So it's welded everywhere on this side and mostly at the bottom, but there's some areas at the bottom that I'm gonna have to work on uh, when we flip the frame because it's harder to weld upside down, right? So this is where it overlaps. We're gonna grind it very gently before we put the shirt, but that's gonna be some other time. Uh, plug welds as well, we're gonna grind them gently. Here, we're not even gonna grind. Um, where's that bracket? When we line up the holes, this doesn't interfere. So, we're not even gonna grind anything there. Here, I also welded this. We're gonna grind because it's a little bit ugly at the bottom. So here is where they matched. Here, this piece that I welded was a little bit too short. So I left this one a little bit longer and I bent it over. To weld it so um filled up the corner didn't do anything about this like i said this we're gonna do when we flip the frame but it is mostly welded to the plug welds there should be one yeah at the end the jig was covering it this is the repair that we made and this hole here we're gonna need to fill but like i said that's gonna be when we flip the frame upside down so one side i can call it done uh, excluding those little thingies that we still need to do but i don't want to flip it now just for that we're going to replace the other side we're going to replace even the top shirt and then we're going to flip it upside down and we're going to finish the welding underneath we're going to replace the bottom shirt and as it is upside down we're going to do the reinforcement of the differential mounts so before we flip it, we have to see what else did we have. We had this 
to weld. We shouldn't forget this before we flip it. So we don't need to flip it thousand times because turns out that it is hard to do it alone, you know? I did it my, by myself, but I was like, wow. And I remember flipping the 1974 frame at work like thousands of times on, on my own. I don't know how that was possible here. I was like, ho oh. ho. Anyway, oh, I didn't show you the inside. So this side is, looks like this up there. I'm gonna finish it when we flip it. Same here. The top doesn't look great, but everything else looks fantastic. I mean, it doesn't look great because it's not finished, but we're gonna finish it. That's so far what came out of the frame. And if that power is not in my way, I'm gonna keep it <laughs> until we finish the whole frame and we will see how much of the frame stayed here. <laughs> anyway, like I said, that's gonna be everything for today. I think this is gonna be a long video, probably an hour long video. But to be honest, I know many people complain about long videos, but there are other people who say it's great to have long videos. For me, it's better to make long videos. Turns out they become more popular and they make me more money, so <laughs> don't tell anyone. Anyways, I'm rambling, so what I'm gonna do next is off camera, I'm gonna repair the other one. I'm not gonna hold you here for the second part unless something really interesting happens. I'm uh, not gonna film it. And then in the next video, we're gonna do the shirt. We're gonna flip it upside down. We're gonna do the other shirt and we're gonna do the differential mounts, as I said. So I'm hoping to keep it two-part video that is gonna be uh, strictly for frame repair. So I'm gonna continue on my own, but before that, I'm gonna run to the office and finish editing this video because I can't wait to put it on. I haven't posted anything like a work video in two weeks because of my vacation. I posted something about a parcel that I received, so I'm sure that you are impatient. So, so I guess that's gonna be all the work for today in the garage. I'm gonna come back after I finish the video. So once again, guys, thanks for watching, commenting, subscribing, sharing, supporting the channel. Check the Rusty Beauties Facebook uh, group, 3000 members now, that's like, didn't expect that at all. And uh, I'm really, really happy that so many people came together. People are helping each other and, and the group becomes more and more popular. So thank you for that. Also under this video, you can find the merchandise store where you can buy hats, hoodies, and uh, t-shirts, and mugs, and stickers with branded Rusty Beauties, if you're interested. That helps me too. If you're watching on TV and there's nothing under the video, you can find also, in the beginning of the Rusty Beauties group on Facebook, you can find also a link to my store, or on my website, www.rustybeauties.com. And if you're really interested in helping me financially, you can also donate by sending PayPal transfers to elin.yakov at rustybeauties.com or even become a Patreon. So there's also a link to my Patreon page at the bottom of this video. So again, I started rambling. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one, hopefully really soon. Bye.